the um, is the uh, Waihoro, uh Sprayden Kashmir Community Board. Carolyn Potter. Kia ora tato. Um, I'd just like to congratulate my, the person before me on the, the car rally. Um, I'd love to hear more about that. It sounds yeah. like a really exciting thing to do with kids, young people. Um, I'd like to think about repeating that down our area. Um, we've got a part A. Is that coming up? Not on the presentation. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I thought it would be on the... Um, um, which is to do with easements on the next door to the um, development on Worsley's Road, um, housing development on Worsley's Road, the easements to allow for the development of the uh, floodplain, which will be a wonderful asset and park for the neighbourhood. Um, as I've mentioned before, this um, has literally switched a whole neighbourhood around about partial, partially resenting the new housing development into um, a great deal of enjoyment in the new park where they're already people are walking their dogs and, and walking kids etc um, um, in a development that's going to be an absolute enhancement of the neighbourhood as the other uh, flood developments have been in the other two areas that have already been done. The council's doing a wonderful job and council staff are doing a great, great work in that. In that. So we move it later. Um, okay. Picture. Uh, we had the Manuka Cottage blessing. Um, this is this development. This rebuild of a community cottage has been eight years in the making, and a lot of disappointment in the road. And but the uh, the blessing, uh, which was the opening of the building. Um, was ex was a terrific occasion. Um, this has been done on a reserve next door to um, uh, Otatahi Housing, um, and with a playground outside of it. And it is going to be a, a terrific asset in the area. And um, it has taken a lot of work by council staff, particularly because it's building on a reserve. But it's going to be worthwhile in the end, and it's a it's a great building. We were really pleased to be there and to be um, at the blessing, and we look forward to the opening. <laughs> we've had the turning of the sod, we've had the blessing. We now well, then we're going to have the opening, but it's all been worthwhile. Thank you. Um, this was a very special occasion. Um, our, the board has been enabled by staff to, um, every couple of months, have our board meeting somewhere else. And this was at Addington School. And 13 years ago, our board tried to get um, Addington kids and community access to the school, which had been split in ha um, half by Brougham Street, the uh, building of Brougham Street, and our board tried to get some access to the school by the people who were left on the other side of Brougham Street, separated from the traffic. We wanted to, um, we were ignoring disability access and asking for an overbridge. Um, we would not ask for that now. But we wanted a tunnel or an overbridge to get the children across the road. That never happened. We, um, we put a, quite a lot of pressure on, on NZTA at the time, we failed. This board, the school has become increasingly fed up with what is a dangerous situation. And, it, um, and at this meeting, we had parents talking to us and children. That's um, Tessa Cook and Jacob Wilkins McClay there before us. And um, we had uh, community members there and we had NZTA. It's very much to NZTA's credit that they came prepared and they promised the school that within a period of two years they would be building, and they didn't specify, but they said they would be building a crossing of Brougham Street for the Addington community that would completely separate the community and the children from the traffic. 
Unfortunately, and sadly, and without any prejudice, I'd just like to say that the following day a cyclist was killed on that particular crossing. And, um, uh, and that is what the school has feared. They showed photographs, for instance, of uh, uh, trucks and cars on the crossing who had not stopped at the lights, as they should have done. So this was, this was a real major success for the community, not for the board in particular, but for the community. And uh, I, I was astonished at NZTA's um, willingness to come to the party. And we are very, we're delighted, we're absolutely <coughs> delighted. This is one of the wins for the year that we can report back on. And we were thrilled about the actions of the community and how worthwhile it was. Next one. And this is, um, <laughs> this is a, a, a short video that we're going to play on uh, a mentoring program which calls for women to be able to play rugby, uh, to enable women to play rugby. Nothing gets in the way when the suburbs and Prebleton under 16 women's team hit the field. Despite this, the girls still face many challenges playing the sport. These are just a few of them. I'm not strong. Yeah. Don't know how to play. Refs being like, not as like, that easier on us than boys. Not being taken as seriously as we want to be taken. The Suburbs Rugby Club is determined to change this. For women's rugby in general and, um, and the girls rugby to be taken more seriously. Uh, we believe it's a great product and uh, and um, great rugby to watch, um, exciting and brutal and all the stuff that goes with the good game of rugby. He started a mentoring group for the girls last year, organising training camps and lining up top women's rugby players to pave the way. The results are already showing. And we've seen massive improvement um, in individuals' skill levels um, and the way that they play the game as a team. So it's, it's been great, yeah. Brought us like together. Yeah, it helped uh, helped us learn about each other and most about rugby. Bond friendships. Jason says it's all about encouraging girls to give it a go and make good decisions. They're just uh, at that impressionable age, and, and that as well, I guess, where um, they're looking at making important choices in their life. Um, sport is such a, a massive um, tool that they can use to you know to gain sort of um, togetherness and that sort of thing with their, their peers. In 2018, more than 1,300 women registered to play rugby across Canterbury. But officials would like to increase that, and in a couple of years, they'd like to boost that number to 1,600. Jason shares this goal and is calling on girls to give it a try. Antoinette Spicer, Metro News. We've had a lot to do with the Suburbs Rugby Club. They are really changing the culture of rugby in our area. For instance, they were one of the first clubs to go alcohol-free. And they have been very much involved with our board as well because they're taking over the lease of Coronation Hall. The Coronation Hall repair and renovation in order to be able to make it um, suitable has taken some time and we look forward to seeing the uh, progress um, until the Suburbs Rugby Club can um, get into it. The Suburbs Rugby Club also intend to sublet that to another organisation in our community. We, I just wanted to mention one more thing. Public forum is the best thing on our board. We have never, we have never fewer than three groups or people uh, coming into public forum. Sometimes we really have to ask people to come the next week because we've got five or six people wanting to speak at public forum. It's been incredibly exciting, interesting, innovative, and it has led us to several ideas and projects for the future that we probably wouldn't have thought about. It has been highly successful in our communication with the community and their communication with us. And you can see in our report some of the people and groups that have come to us recently. And I just really am glad that the Council introduced that as a feature of our meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. And just Antoinette Spicer, who was the reporter, she was coming as to our board as a as a um, trainee journalist 
Oh, it just was really cool to see. With her, the broadcasting actually. school, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was cool. We have the broadcasting school people coming to coming to see us um, regularly every year. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I see them every year as well. <laughs> um, yeah, just and I've said it before that um, the Manuka Cottage, the new building, has totally changed that area because when we talk about reserves in the old days, we couldn't touch that piece of land, and it has been a journey, and that's what we we're talking about earlier on. Yeah. But uh, an interesting thing. The, the, the locals didn't use the cut the, um, the, the really used the playground etc because they, it wasn't a safe area they didn't feel safe no. this has totally changed the area and is such an asset and this is what we should be doing it's only taken what eight years yeah just saying. But, uh, yeah. your point is well made though because they would have looked at other buildings that would have been conventionally in the community but this has changed the use of that land and the design that the staff have done is terrific. And really, when you enter the um, the reserve and look at the building and, and, and come to the building, the whole welcome is entirely different in that area. Yeah. Um, uh, James. Uh, kia ora, Carolyn. Thanks for the report. It was really interesting to hear and to highlight, have you highlight the suburb's rugby club yeah. and the fact that they've gone alcohol-free. Mm. I'm looking at you, New Brighton. <laughs> and and, and no, that, I didn't know that, and so hopefully that's the start, or it's part of a wave where they could could look at that, which is ironic coming from me, I know. But <laughs> it's but, ironic coming from me, James. <laughs> okay, cool. And I just want to do a shout out for um, you were talking about Antoinette Spicer before, and uh, the the guy that was being interviewed. Jason McRoberts, he's the young brother of Mike McRoberts. Oh, yeah, that's so cool. He just cool. looks older. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> different, different quality of hairstyle. <laughs> yeah. Okay, um, so it's been moved by Tim, seconded by Melanie. I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Uh, next one is uh, Te Pātaka o 